blowout prevention. Something that all of us in the drilling industry need to be concerned with. The first line of defense against blowouts is an alert drill crew. The second line of defense is the blowout preventer. It's designed to shut off a well flow through the annulus. The first stage of a blowout is usually a kick. A kick is usually preceded by a warning sign that there's something going on down hole. The driller is always on the lookout for signs of a kick. It could be a drilling break, flow increase, or pit gain. One of the tools we use while drilling, along with the BOP, is known as the diverter. It has special uses that you need to know about. In this program, we'll take a look at the installation and operation procedures of the Regan type KFDS diverter, which is found on most of our rigs. Let's go ahead and take a look at how a floating rig may be able to use a diverter system to their advantage. The purpose of the diverter is for it to be a means of controlling well flows by directing the flow away from the rig over the side. Your rig will have a set plan established by the drilling company and Sedco Forex rig manager as to when to use the diverter. When the decision to divert is made, everyone involved should be extremely careful and alert. Let's take a closer look at the diverter system and see where it's placed in our wellhead assembly. Starting from the seabed, we first have our wellhead, then the BOP, then enough sections of riser to reach the rig. At that point, the slip joint is installed. At the top of the slip joint, the diverter is placed in a housing just below the rotary table. A packer element fits inside the diverter, which, when pressured up, closes against whatever is in the hole, as you can see here. When this is done, the fluid coming up the annulus is diverted to the flow lines. The flow line's normal route is to the shakers, where returns are taken. In case of a kick, the diverter line valve can be opened and the flow line valve closed which will shut off the discharge to the shakers and will instead direct the fluid to the overboard discharge line. On most of our rigs, both of these functions will be interlocked. Here's what the diverter looks like sitting on its side. This area here accepts the dogs underneath the rotary table to lock the diverter housing in place. Your upper and lower flow line seals then seal this area off your returns as they come up your riser will then exit through your flow line through this area here. This unit will be setting up with that end down. Here's the area where your control lines will be installed on the block that provides functions for the insert, diverter bag, flow line seals, and locking dogs. Here you can see the rubber of your diverter packer. When your packer element is installed, hydraulic pressure forces this rubber against your element rubber to seal up around whatever you have in the hole. The handling tool, as you see here, will be used to either remove or install the diverter. The diverter is a very basic, simple device. It requires very little for a uh, roughneck to uh, work on. Visual inspection of the seals. Since the seals do not carry any real pressure, they operate in a static mode, well then they last quite a long time. Any major maintenance will be taken care of by the subsea engineer. There are two different points where the diverter can be controlled. One is on the spider deck at the diverter control panel. The other point is operated from the rig floor at the driller's control panel. The diverter air pressure is basically your rig air pressure, which is maintained on the rig. The manifold pressure is taken from your accumulator unit, which is normally 3,000 PSI. 
Most rigs have a backup system built into the diverter control unit in case the main accumulator goes down. The diverter packer pressure generally runs between 300 to 500 PSI. Its regulator can be adjusted here to make sure you have a seal on the packer element. Normally, your returns will be taken back to the shakers and the vent line overboard valve will be closed. When the shaker valve is closed, the downwind overboard vent line valve will open automatically, which gives you a path overboard. The diverter can then be closed, giving you a seal which prevents the influx from coming up through the rotary. If needed, you can increase the pressure on the seal from this point. You'll be doing a function test of the diverter every trip when you're drilling shallow hole. You'll also want to check your discharge lines periodically to make sure they're not plugged up with solids. Now that you're familiar with the parts and operation of the diverter, let's look at the installation procedure. Remember, it goes in place after all the riser has been run. It attaches to the slip joint. Using the handling tool, pick up the diverter in the elevators. Notice how the ball joint is at an angle here. You may want to make a clamp that'll fit around the ball joint to keep it aligned so you don't have to spend too much time straightening it out. Another area you need to concern yourself with is between the flow line seals. The tubing either needs to be removed or protected when you handle the assembly. Once you attach the diverter assembly to the slip joint, tighten down the locking dogs that lock the two sections together. The diverter can now be lowered into the rotary table and landed in the housing. After you engage the locking dogs and support dogs if you have them, you should take an overpull of 10,000 pounds or so just to see that the assembly is secured in place. Now loosen the running tool by spinning it off like you see here. This particular tool takes about 22 turns. Don't take it all the way out yet, because for the time being, it will cover the open hole. Next, the control lines are connected up to the diverter. Remove the cover plate and inspect the O-rings. They should be clean and uniform. The control block can then be bolted in place. Once it has been bolted down, it should look like this. Remove the riser spider and reinstall the master bushing drive ring. You can now remove the diverter running tool. The diverter packer element can now be lowered down into the diverter. Now is when you need to function test the diverter. First, you lock the four lockdown dogs into place. This keeps the packer element in place. You can then apply pressure to the element. You can see it close up against the drill pipe. If everything checks out, release the pressure on the packer and reinstall the master bushing and bowl. Now you are set to drill. As we mentioned earlier, your rig will have a plan decided ahead of time as to whether you should shut the well in or divert. It's up to you to know what to do at the stage you're drilling. If you're going to divert, you should follow your Sedco 4X policy on diverter procedures. Along with the policy, some helpful hints are, at the beginning of every tower, check the wind direction and open whichever overboard line is downwind. Do not close the diverter if the insert element is not in place and locked. Make sure you have enough pressure on the slip joint packer. You don't want it to leak. Under no circumstances should the drill string be worked when the diverter packer is closed. It can break the seal. Have a portable gas detection unit on the drill floor, checked and ready to go. Assign someone to watch the flow line, valves and seals for leakage. Be sure your logging unit is monitoring gas sensors and flow returns. This process should be followed whenever you're trying to divert a kick.
It's important that you have a plan worked out ahead of time so that everyone's ready to do their job. As a review, let's look over several of the points we talked about. The diverter is not designed to shut in or halt flow. You should function test the diverter and valves every trip when drilling shallow hole. You should always be aware of wind direction and have the downwind overboard line open. Valves and lines should be periodically checked to be sure they're not plugged with solids. Okay. The seals on the diverter and the packer should be kept clean. Everyone should know their duties in case the diverter is used. Be sure you understand and follow the plan your rig has as to when to use the diverter. As you can see, the diverter is a tool that can give you control in case you need to divert your well. It's part of the defense system you have on your rig to keep it safe from blowouts.